good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, without boring you guys, let me just swiftly take you through across what the energy sector and blockchain means for this moment in time. First off, the global energy demand shot up from the last year to this year, and it is projected to shoot to approximately 48, by 48% 48 by 2040. The demand of energy is set to increase significantly, driven by increase in prosperity in the developing world. So the key is we are faced with two prime issues here. We need more energy, but we also need to go less carbon. Un up until now, most of the energy generation is focused on uh, re non-renewable resources such as oil and gas and coal, which, which accounts to approximately 70% of the global uh, carbon emission. The good news is that the cost of renewables has, co has come down to such an extent that it makes it really viable. Global non-renewable energy generation processes are catching up the trend and we are looking at a future where we're gonna have a 100% energy mix of renewable sources. So these are the two challenges. We need more energy and we have less carbon. How are you gonna tackle that? So there are three Ds, the so-called Ds that we're looking at in the energy sector. First stop is we need to decarbonize and we need to decentralize and we need to digitize. So what do you mean by decarbonization is that we need to switch the energy generation from a carbon intensive process to a non-carbon intensive process. Primarily the solar farms, wind generation and other renewable energy generation sources. Decentralization, traditionally the energy grid, if you look at the energy grid, we produce energy a couple of, couple of miles or 100 miles outside the city is generated. You have the huge hydro plants, coal plants, oil and gas powered plants. Then it is transmitted across into the city. And then we have the distribution line, the substations that distribute the energy to the homes and buildings where we consume. The issue with this is there's a huge AT&C loss that's been take, uh, taken into account at the transmission. So decentralization is moving from a, uh, a centralized model of one entity controlling the entire structure, the entire grid, to a decentralized model. We are seeing trends in which the energy generation is coming closer to the home with solar panels, maybe even wind uh, generation sources, and it's getting closer to the homes. That's what we mean by decentralization. But the key over here is the digitization, digitalization. What we mean over here is that we're gonna put in sensors across the entire GTD, generation transmission and distribution. Monitor the assets, monitor the power flow, understand the load, and accurately distribute load according to what the demand is. This itself gives in a lot of, uh, uh, a huge amount of energy consumption reduction because the wastage is reduced. So three things the energy sector must do is, first is, to utilize the Internet of Things to collect energy-related data. What this means is, see, electricity is something that it's not reached, I mean, the energy storage has not reached a commercial viability uh, point. We have Tesla's battery, it's great, but it's not reached the point of commercialization. The cost is still high. Therefore, we cannot store energy at the commercial level. So what do we do? Any energy that is generated, it's transmitted and distributed without any visibility into the consumption. So using IoT network and sensors, we get to know basically the smart meters, you get to know the accurate load, the accurate consumption, based on which we're gonna route the energy to that particular community or locality as per the demand. This is big. How big? A country like India, if you, you wouldn't believe if I would say India is an energy uh, positive economy. What that means is that India is generating more power than what is required by the country. But 40% of the households in India experiences a shutdown. Why is this? 
This is due to the large amount of AT&C loss between the transmission and distribution, not uh, taking into account the energy theft as well. So the government has made a mandate. They mentioned that we're not going to spend money on the generation process. Rather than that, we're going to spend money and resources in making the distribution efficient. So the first stop is by installing smart meters. I'll talk a bit more into that. Now, where does the blockchain come in is that the data generated in the smart meters and the sensors needs to be secure and needs to be made available because a grid is a critical infrastructure. You hack it into the grid and you pull down the grid, the whole country's economy, or it comes to a standstill. So blockchain is a key in there. And we need AI, learning algorithms, to be deployed on this data to optimize and automate the grid. So talking about the digitalization, right now we are looking at a unidirectional grid where the energy is generated, it's transmitted, it's, con it's consumed. It's a single direction of energy and information, less consumer insights. We just get to know how much is being consumed per month, one data. It's, it has to be manually checked, and it's, it's low in efficiency, and you have limited control over it. Now, the trend that's coming up is smart grid. Now, what is smart grid? Is embedding sensors all across, bringing the generation to the source, and you create a two-way communication, distributed generation, a complete command and control center, automated grid control, self-monitoring, self-healing grid, powered by big data and AI infrastructure. So this is where our company, SESoft, comes in. A bit of introduction on what SESoft is. SESoft is the first company to implement smart grid in India. Back in 2014, we work with the government, we work with the Ministry of Energy, and we uh, created the meter data management software that sits in all the smart meters. So you have three layers when you talk about the energy vertical. First, you have the infrastructure layer comprising of all the field devices, the transformers, switches, reclosers, sensors, all of it. Blockchain goes into the firmware of these devices, ensuring that even if a hack happens, the firmware is not altered. That's one of the areas where blockchain fits in. Second is the communication layer itself. There are various communication protocols coming in, narrowband IoT, uh, RF mesh. Blockchain goes in in securing this communication as well between the meter data acquisition system and the meter data management system. The next layer is the entire computing stack. Once you get this data, what do you do with that data? So there are modules such as the meter data management, peak load management, asset condition, outage information, and so on and so forth. Th this is a very critical data set. Number one, you need more uh, integrity into this data. Blockchain comes in there. You can monetize on this data. Blockchain comes in there. You can have individual artificial agents, artificial intelligent agents, acquiring this data and, and, doing, and, and, and responding to smart contracts. So these are the areas where blockchain can fit in. By the way, this is the stack that SESoft offers. And we are working with multiple utilities in India, in here, across the world. And that's where we are. So the mandate I was talking about in India is called the Uday mandate. You can look up. And, and what the government says is that by 2019, they're going to be rolling out 35 million smart meters. Now, this is at... at uh, all the economy is at the critical point when it comes to climate change. It's projected that by 2050, we're going to have an increase in, in, by four degrees in climate. That would be a tip-off to a catastrophic point where we cannot, we cannot do anything. So it's going to come to that point. So 197 countries have signed up globally at the United Nations uh, Conservation Sustainability Development Council to contribute carbon credits and ensure that their generation is not carbon intensive and to reduce that to two degrees Celsius. And how do you know that the economy is really producing the energy in a non-carbon intensive manner? That's where blockchain comes in as well. There is where our software, which sits inside the meter, would know that each home or each building or each generation point has generated this much amount of energy 
through a renewables resource. And this is something that the, the, the governments can use for energy credits. Fast forward, I've mentioned about this. This is, uh, uh, okay, what would be the impact? In just 10 months of implementation in India, we brought down the ATNC loss from 30 odd, yeah, 35% down to 9%. That is the efficiency and, and the impact that a smart meter has. Uh, we have several case studies. You, we, are, we have Gartner reviews. We are listed on Gartner. And this is where we are, and we are working towards building the next uh, efficient energy uh, infrastructure. Questions? Any questions? Thank you. Okay. So, so thank you. That was.